Blessed and most merciful Heavenly Father, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I beg and I plead, Lord, give me the courage, the words, the will, the wisdom to speak. And I repent of all my sins. And I beg Jesus to enter into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you. I will follow you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I am just the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing special about me is that I am forgiven, and I am God's dirt. I want to share with you a, a picture and I, I hope that you can see it and what this picture is it's it's a picture of Jesus and that in my first rapture dream Jesus came down to me in a in a beam or like a shaft of light and he put his arms around me and I looked into the eyes of God what I saw was unimaginable love love beyond all reason beyond all understanding this is the picture of Jesus the man who came down to me in a shaft of light and he put his arms around me I felt more love than I ever knew existed. After that, I knew that I would spend the rest of my life trying to get back into the loving arms of Jesus, where I belonged, whatever it took, whatever I had to do. After all, look what Jesus did for you and for me. He suffered, was tortured, he shed his precious blood, he died for you and for me. The early Christians called themselves the way. The way home. The way to salvation. The way to please God. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus. Jesus is the only way. The only way to salvation. As no other name in heaven or earth can save you, me, or anyone except for the name of Jesus. This was written a long time ago by a famous Christian. Listen to these words carefully. About the time of the end, a body of men will rise up who will turn their attention to the prophecies and insist upon their literal interpretation in the midst of much clamor and opposition. This author's name was Sir Isaac Newton. I am reviving the name, the way, and it's not about following me or any man or any religion, but it's about following Jesus Christ and him and his word only, because Jesus is the way, the only way. We have no leaders except for Jesus and his word, and we have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us every day. And just like those early Christians, Jesus is the way. We believe in the pre-tribulation pre rapture of the faithful, and we do not believe in once saved, always saved, because this is not scriptural. We believe every word of the King James Bible is the true inspired word of God. And I, I have another image to show you. And this symbol was found on a pottery shard. Can you see it? And it was excavated from the floor of the very first Christian church in Jerusalem, founded by James, the half-brother of Jesus. This symbol identified early Christians one to another. The menorah on top symbolizes God and his covenant with Abraham and all of his descendants, even those alive today. The menorah gives light into the world, but it especially gives light to the Jewish people, God's chosen people. It is a reminder to the Jewish people of God's covenant with Abraham and with him. The middle symbol is the Star of David. This symbolizes the Jewish people, God's chosen people. And this symbol reminds everyone that God has a covenant with the 
Jews even today. And God's covenant is being fulfilled even today. After 2,000 years in exile, the Jews have returned to their ancestral home. This has never before happened in, in thousands of years of history. This has never happened before. God had a promise and God fulfilled his promise to Abraham and Abraham's descendants. Israel is strong, powerful, and the desert is in bloom where it never bloomed before because of God's promise to Abraham. And the fish symbol at the bottom intentionally intertwined with the Star of David to show that Christians are adopt, adopted or grafted into by God and a part of the covenant that God has with the Jews. This symbol was used by early Christians to identify one to another because of the severe persecution by the Roman government at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have the last picture that everybody recognizes. And the last picture is the cross. A symbol of shame, but Jesus made it a symbol of his love for us, his dedication and his love in the Father. And his promise to us, a symbol of God's sacrifice and love for us. These are the last days. Do not be deceived. Let no man deceive you. Pray always and be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. The last thing I want to show you is the King James Bible. And I carry my Bible with me everywhere I go. Shopping, eating out, in stores, everywhere. And every word of the King James Bible is true and inspired by God. Read your Bible often as there is wisdom, truth, and peace in your Bible. I have on occasion had a burning question and I would take a and flip through the Bible, the pages of my Bible and just stop randomly on a page and I would take and blindly point to a verse and I would start reading. You would be amazed at how many times I found truth and wisdom in an area that I had a burning question on. Maybe you should try this with your burning questions as well. I've asked people all the time, or I have people ask me all the time, that since these are the last days and Jesus is about to return for his faithful to rapture us out of here, should they move or change jobs or go to school, have children? I get, I get many such questions. All I can say on questions like this is to pray on it and pray, pray to be led by the Holy Spirit. Be faithful and attentive to the Holy Spirit, as He will never steer you wrong. You may not understand or even agree with what He tells you, but He has your salvation and your best interest at heart. Bobby and I pray for each and every one of you. If you hear my voice, Bobby and I pray for you. Remember, these are the last days, and what you say and what you do in these very last days is more important than you could ever imagine. Also, please carry your Bible with you everywhere you go, shopping, eating out, and say the blessing over every single meal, as it, as it is more important than you could ever imagine. And then in these last days, you do not want to deny Jesus in any way, shape, or form. God bless you, and God keep you, and yours in his loving arms. And may God look into your eyes one day also, and say to you, Welcome home, my true and faithful servant. Our time here grows very, very short. One day Bobby and I will look for you on those streets of gold. With much love and more grace from above. God bless you. God keep you.